Hello y'all, this is a fresh clip from the most recent episode of Attack and Dethrone Godcast. Listen and watch the full episode wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Well, I think so- Forrest is here as far as being able to speak and is connected. How, Forrest, you, yeah. you were um, infected with the plague recently. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good now. I'm feeling yeah. good now. Okay, well, good. If anybody says that it's not real, fuck them. I think it's almost impossible I, now for the people <laughs> that say it's not real to say it's not real because there have literally been hundreds of millions, if not billions of people that have gotten it at least once at this point. So Yeah, yeah but do you know any of them? I know a lot of them. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know so many people who have the, who've <laughs> gotten it. Too. I'm the only one who doesn't get it. Like, everybody else I know has gotten it. I'm like, I, I haven't gotten it either. Yeah. But yeah. Because I am... Yeah, so far, not not going to work. But uh, I'm like super like I wear a fucking respirator at work. I'm that guy, you know. I'm the one that looks like I'm going into a factory to go yeah. to a fucking college and work with people. So, shit, you um, smart. Fuck that. I mean, yeah, they had me down for about two weeks. Yeah, uh, and then I made the mistake. I didn't mess up because I was feeling feeling myself. So now I ran on a Saturday, but I just mm-hmm. crashed on Sunday. Right. Yeah. And then it kind of like uh, had a, uh, I guess, kickback effect on me. So that was pretty bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm just going easy now. I'm not running. I'm not doing anything right now. I'm just going to chill out. I'll probably be yeah. like another week before I do anything. Because that's the yeah. thing that it killed my energy level. I was just sleeping. I was like, yeah. I just had no energy. And then I felt weak. And I had, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Post nasal drip, sore mm-hmm. throat. Mm-hmm. Not much, not much sneezing. But I was just congested. And you know, I could feel yeah. like the buildup of mucus in my body, like in my throat, in my mm-hmm. nose. And I just couldn't get rid of it. You know, I guess mm-hmm. it was my body finding out the infection, but I was like, man, it was hard to sleep yeah. uh, constantly or consistently. So I sleep for like two hours. Then I wake up coughing, hacking, uh, yeah. and things like that. Then I go down, lay down for like 30 minutes. Then I fall back to sleep and I have to get up. So it was intermittent as far as my sleep was concerned, right? But I was sleeping a lot just in intervals, like two, three hour intervals. And I had to get up. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. no, I'm feeling good now. I'm feeling good now. But it was definitely unlike the flu or any flu yeah. that I've had, right? So, um, mm-hmm. cause I've never been that lacking of energy before. You know, even when I've yeah. had uh, um, uh, flus and things of that nature. So, but then I was thinking like, the way I look at that, hey man, if I didn't have the vaccine, of course, it could be much and the, worse. Yeah. And the ivermectin, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, you know I went right right by the the uh, the veterinarian vet, vet, the vet guy. I got me some of that with a quick man. Oh yeah, yeah. hydroxychloroquine. Uh, what else is it? Zinc. Monoclonal yeah, anti. I had me some zinc. Yeah. I, I had some zinc, so I was, that's good to go. Oh, you yeah. got yeah. on the Joe Rogan protocol, basically. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the Aaron Rodgers protocol. I don't. I, I don't have no five thousand or I mean fifteen thousand dollars to throw around like old Joe, well, right? Yeah. So you're getting little bells. Kettlebells, I mean, bottle ropes, and you know, that, 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 that Aaron Rodgers right there, boy. <laughs> fucking, that guy is the biggest douche. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to punch that yeah, guy that right in the like, fucking throat. <laughs> that was like two balls just hanging on uh, a nut sack. When yeah, they one sack, Logan, I know. Just, it's like, oh, yeah. God. Uh, just swinging every, back and forth. Everything I ever see in Aaron Rodgers, any video that I come across, I comment every fucking time I go, one Super Bowl, 2010. And then somebody goes, how many of you won? I'm like, well, Eli Manning's won two, one more than Rogers has. So there you fucking go. Bro, Eli. You go. <laughs> Eli. I, I, wanted to, Eli's back. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Patrick, I don't know if you saw this with Aaron Rodgers, where in the news he's touting ayahuasca and he went down and did a trip and it's yeah. changed his perspective on thinking and he's much in a, more calm now mm, and nice. just kind of the it's ego difficult. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I haven't heard about that, but I, it doesn't surprise me. Like it's an odd thing because it's you know Aaron Rodgers. I mean, this guy, the ego on this guy is immense. Yeah, and ayahuasca, which is you know, an ego buster, yeah. and they met, and fucking Rodgers won. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it really, it really says a lot. Yeah. It does. <laughs> like uh, I'm not doing ayahuasca. There's this weird phenomena with psychedelics where it's not even weird i think 
if I can get kind of woo or whatever about it for a minute, but I've taken plenty of psychedelics and, and anyone else here who has as well, there's this thing where like, yeah, you have this like ego dissolving, ego death experience. If you take enough mushrooms or you take ayahuasca, you have this intense, like harrowing even experience on this drug and you're just like communing with nature and it's just like, whoa, like, you know, he puts everything in perspective and it's like life changing and all that. But then after you come out of that experience, you're like, holy shit, I know the truth. I know <laughs> I just can't the meaning <laughs> of everything. <laughs> right, and this grandiosity <laughs> sets in where you're like, I'm going to save the world or I'm going to tell everybody the secret. You know, yeah. and that's the thing that I think like community, if we had actual community, would actually help temper. Be like, yo, you had a great experience, but you need to like understand. <laughs> like, yeah, just like wash the dishes and chill the fuck out. Like, yeah. take a shower, calm down, like hold the baby, you know, go on a walk, like just calm down. Um, but here, you know, you have someone like Aaron Rodgers has a huge platform who is obviously has an enormous ego. Like, yes, I'm sure he had his own version of an ego death on ayahuasca and I'm sure it's calmed him down. I'm sure it helped him put things in perspective. But if he has the same access to resources, wealth and influence that he had prior to the trip, then he's just going to channel that feeling he had into another form of narcissism. Mm -hmm. and that's like yeah. what happens i think that happens to a lot of people they yeah, have the I money agree. to go on this ayahuasca trip where they get to like talk to so-called indigenous healers who are basically just acting as if like they're putting on this sort of play for them mm -hmm. like oh you're in this indigenous ritual we're gonna do a ritual and it's like not that those things aren't real but they often cater them specifically to westerners and people of the global north that can afford to fly down to fucking peru and spend right. 5,000 or however many thousands of dollars to go to a, 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 like a resort and then they come out of it and they're like oh my god I had this such a spiritual journey and they didn't even touch the thing you know it's mm -hmm. it's just a form of colonialism honestly so you know we did a podcast it's yeah. on about a year or so ago about that it was really good yeah yeah I've had a few like I had this sort of shift where I love psychedelics and I will always speak highly of them as a positive, potentially positive experience. But like there was a turn in my podcast where I decided to interview somebody who like had a really critical view of the ayahuasca kind mm. of thing, the industrial, what do you want to call it? Tourism industry, basically. Right. And um, after that, I started like interviewing other people who had more critical views of the corporatization of psychedelics, like how it's become like with like with the weed thing, like we're talking about the weed. <laughs> right. yeah. It's yeah. so cool. You can just walk into a dispensary, but there are people making millions of dollars off that shit. And there are still however many people still in fucking prison for prison. selling yeah, weed. Know yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so like nothing really substantial has changed systemically. It's just some people now can make money. And so the same thing is going to happen with, I guarantee, as soon as the uh, MDMA trials end and as soon as, you know, they start legalizing it for therapy and all this stuff, you're going to see a lot of people make a lot of fucking money because you're already seeing that. There's investors already. They're like, oh, we're getting ready for the big, yeah, big business of yeah. psychedelics here, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, you know, and I, not to be like too judgmental because I, you know, everything's, it's different for every person, but. I think psychedelics are kind of like you get out like what you put in. So if mm. if you're kind of like Aaron Rodgers, it's just really a shallow egomaniac. You're yeah. maybe not going to have quite as deep of a experience that really blows you away because you might just not think like that. You know, it works with what yeah. you got. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, there are. It's, it's yeah it, it doesn't stop people from being awful unfortunately we want we want to we want to you know we want a quick fix i think we want we want the thing that'll fix people of their psychopathy their nihil their uh whatever the word i'm trying to say is their their their, their ego and everything um but there isn't <laughs> yeah, it's um, still silver bullet yeah it's just i mean people are crazy man have People you have you guys crazy. ever heard of uh, Nick Fuentes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's crazy that, that shitty yeah, little yeah, white yeah. nationalist yeah. piece of shit kid. I, yeah. I never heard what he said before, right? Yeah, and I I, I listened to a clip, and he was talking about like, man, 
we want women in the in the house. We don't want them to have jobs. Mm-hmm. Like kill all the L. Not, then I just transgender folks. L B G T Q. He wants to kill everybody. This dude said we don't want to go back to 1999. We want to go back to 1099. That <laughs> motherfucker is crazy. Yeah. Right. But what I'm saying is that think about how crazy he is, and then think about the fact he has a large following. Right. Yeah. That yeah. last conference that he had, and uh, what's her name, Marjorie Marjorie Green. Yeah, yeah. She was there. Mm-hmm. So he's not small potatoes, right? Mm-hmm. So if you think about how many people out there that are fucked up like that, right? I don't give a damn if you you give them all the psychedelics in the world. That's not going to change them. They just pieces of shit. That's the same with Aaron Rodgers. These cats are not going. You gotta you gotta realize there's something wrong with you in order to change, right? And these Absolutely. cats, they don't see themselves as being wrong in any way, shape, or form. No yeah. way. So he might have just did it. I think he probably just did it for the experience. Just to have a talking point. Like, I did this, or I did that, or I went here. This. So he just did something. I think he did something unique just to do something that he knew none of the other guys on the team were going to do, right? So in a way, for me, it was like his expression of his superiority. You're not on my conscious level, so I know you're not going to do something like this. You went to Hawaii, right? Or you went to Miami, or you went to the Bahamas, or, or Fiji, or whatever, right? Yeah. I went and got high, like just like I said, it's kind of like a tourist thing, right? It's not racky. It just gave him the ability to have a good talking point, whether he's at a cocktail uh, engagement or if he's at a bar, he can always talk about something like that, and he'll be seen as unique because mm-hmm. he's a very individualist person. Like you say, he's very narcissistic. So that's mm-hmm. all I see it as far as that's concerned. Um, yeah. If you gave my man Nick Fuente, sorry, he's still going to be an asshole, you know? I think it's just like, like, like Colin was saying, I think it's just an expression of who you are as far as how, how the drug's going to affect you, yeah. right? Like yeah. My father used to get high all the time, right? My 1970s Los Angeles, he wasn't the only one. He grew with weed on his balcony of his apartment, right? He wasn't the only one, so. But he did it as relaxation. He was the same guy when he was high. I mean, he would be playing chess and be smoking weed at the same time. You know, that's just how he got down. So it wasn't like he was wild. In fact, they would all do that, like all his friends. You know, they would sit around and philosophize and women. You know, I mean, that's, that's what they would do. So it was different. Yeah. It was different times. But I, I don't think that – I don't think somebody like Aaron Rodgers or Nick Fuentes or any of these folks, man. I think they're all pieces of shit, to be quite honest with you. They can take all the drugs they want, yeah. not take all the drugs they want. They're just assholes. Yeah. And there's, that's like, hell. another end of it where I'm someone who doesn't do any drugs, and I mm-hmm. see people that do, and they say, oh, it could save the world. Like – yeah. What is that? How do people think exactly. that? Thanks. Yeah. Fuck yeah. that. I've heard that shit before too. That's what I'm saying, right? I mean, yeah. Marjorie Green, you gonna give her some psychedelics, and all of a sudden she gonna get conscious about whatever the fuck. <laughs> the woman's an idiot. You know. <laughs> I, I think I, the thing I hate most about these people is they. Uh, in fact, mention Aaron Rodgers, right? He's supposed to be so conscious and smart, right? So he was, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, immunized or whatever, right? So he's on Joe. I don't know if you saw when Joe talked to him about, you know, like his uh, uh, protocol for uh, for the Rona. But he was like, well, you know, he was allergic to some of the, some something that's in uh, the vaccine. So he said that's why I didn't take, which I didn't believe. I think that's bullshit. Uh, then he said like the uh, blood clots from a uh, uh, not Moderna. What is it? Uh, J- J- Johnson Johnson, right? So he said, well, he went to these cats and they gave him a different protocol to follow. And then he said, well, it had like a little bit of the uh, uh, Rona in it. And then, it, and then Joe Rogan was like, well, what, what did it all consist of? He said, I don't know. I can't <laughs> tell you. <laughs> so how in the fuck are you going to talk about the vaccine, but you don't go microdose this shit from some fool? Come on, man. Come on. I don't even think he took nothing. I don't think he took shit. I think he just like lying. All right. I mean, he lied before and he's lying now. So what I'm saying is that if, if he was conscious, he would change at least some part of his attitude, but he's the same person before psychedelics as he was afterwards, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, people are fascists. They take, they take it. It doesn't stop them from being fascist. It's just, it's, look, I mean, again, I've had some of the most mind-bending experiences ever, and I'm grateful for them. Like, yeah, I... Uh, yeah. I had an experience where I was like 
I know it sounds weird. I was at an experience where I was Jesus Christ and I was on the cross and I felt complete love and empathy for every single motherfucker ever. I had love spewing out of me like as light, like, and that was my trip. I was sitting on a toilet in a bathroom having that trip. That's what it did. And I felt like unconditional love for everybody. Um, but, yeah, that's who you are. Though. Yeah. Right? I mean, that see, shock me, right? I mean, I mean, like, yeah. Maybe to that, not that heightened degree when you're on psychedelics, yeah. but that's like your your natural aura. That's your persona, right? Yeah. So that doesn't shock me. But the thing is, you come out of that and you think everybody could have that, and that's just not true, unfortunately. Right. right. Um, I I want to pivot. I know that guy. Yeah. I, when they were pieces of shit, they were pieces of shit when they got high, right? Mm-hmm. Dudes that are belligerent, they you put some in them, they gonna get more belligerent. I've seen cats get poked up, and all of a sudden they want some of them want to fight. You know, or get yep. up drinking them or whatever it may be. Most times it's going to just bring out your true persona even worse. They mm-hmm. might even kick Aaron Rodgers the fuck out of here. Man, get the fuck out of here. You might put more of an asshole once you got, he took psychedelics and shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, clearly, clearly the boomers didn't all drop acid in the 60s <laughs> and then, and then fix the world. So, dude, yeah. there was an article that came out in Mill, it was like, marine mil- it was like military times or something it was some years ago they had an article where it was written by someone in the i think they were in the marines and they were like hey you know what we should figure out a way to microdose lsd for uh, members of the military to better um interpret um uh, data because you know a lot of data comes in they need to figure out what to do with that information and there's so much spilling in, like, what, how do we organize it, you know? And, like, it's only so much that one person or, or several people can do. Well, if you microdose them with LSD, their ability to focus increases, right? Because microdosing can do that, right? It doesn't get you high. You don't have an actual, like, hallucinogenic experience. But it, it puts you just in a higher state of consciousness of focus where you can, like, interpret data faster and better. And that's true. Like, you know, you take a little bit of psilocybin, a little bit of, of uh, LSD. Yeah, your your focus is amazing in fact you have silicon valley you know types that are like microdosing psilocybin microdosing lsd and they're like man i am such a better i'm so much more efficient at working i can figure shit out so much better and i'm like you know the capitalists and the military can figure out how to take something like that and turn it into a way to make them more efficient and to make more profit and so i'm like okay this is all right it's over you know we're done. <laughs> Just put it away. Like the the promise of the free love and and you know utopia that that people had out of like the sixties or whatever is just a it's a delusion. 